We got a problem in MMA, people. We got a fucking huge problem. So anybody got a chance to watch the Weidman fight, saw the dude poke him in the eye about four times, and the guy dropped on the last one, finished him up with a TKO. And this begs the question, what are we going to do about eye pokes in MMA? What are we going to do about it? Like, I, I watch love and love MMA. I'm just like the next guy. But there's so many ways that we can prove upon MMA. And one of the big improvements we need to fix is the, the, the eye poke situation. Because eye poking is like the most game-changing aspect of a fight. Because you need your eyes. <laughs> when you lose your eye, you have like lack of depth perception. And lack of depth perception is not the best situation for somebody when you're in a fist fight. Because clearly it's 3D. If you only got one eye, you can't see the range and how bad. So it, it's a whole bad situation. So what I've started to look at when I'm watching MMA, when I see these eye pokes, is like, okay, what do you do? Do you stop the fight right then and there? Because all these guys are too tough in their own good, and they'll continue to fight through a bad eye, and that only causes more damage to the eye, and then you get into trouble. So, like, we had, like, the Leon Edward and Blah Mahal situation. We had the Strickland, that Russian dude that, like, clipped a chunk of his eye. John Jones' entire title reign while he's poking dudes in the eyes. Wyman. There's so many fights that have been, like, altered due to our eye poke. And so the question is, how do you fix this? What is the solution? Do you automatically dock a point? Whether it be intentional or unintentional, like I think that would be the probably the first step is just automatically take a point away. Or do we just do what Justin Gaethje says, which is change the gloves? And you know what? I'm on the mindset we should probably just change the gloves. Changing the gloves would probably solve so many more problems. We should really go to that pride situation or um, Justin Gaethje's coach. I forget his name, but he has his gloves that he designed that basically make the fingers curve down so you can't even extend them out like that. And why I said to do that is, is when you're in a fist fight, when you're actually fighting, when you're putting your hands out, you're reaching out in range, the gloves are so like tight and rigid on your hands that they kind of like almost make your fingers splay out. And because you have that particular situation when the, the, the fingers are like splaying out, you're more prone to poke eyes when you're reaching out because MMA is not like boxing. They don't have your whole hand covered. You're not going to make a fist the entire time. You're loose, you're loose, and then you close in as you get the hit. you got to be able to grapple, grab hands. There's a bunch of different variables that come in. So you can't close the hand off completely. But what you can do is put more padding around the fist area so the hands are like pretty much uh, facing downwards. And what that does is you can't get somebody's eye. So if my hands are facing downward, if I reach, it's hard to get into the eye as opposed to if the gloves, which are like straight in, they kind of force the hands out because they're so tight. Like Justin Gaethje said, the restriction of the finger to cut the circulation off that, like you can't keep your hands closed the whole time. You want to naturally splay them out. And so the more I think about it, the more I pontificate. And uh, Joe Rogan, there's a lot of different guys that are on the same mindset, which is like, dude, that's just close the hands down, make the gloves where they curve down when you can't pretty much like poke people's eye out. That seems like the better solution. It seems like a much better solution as opposed to what we keep doing now, which is repeating the same dumb shit and having fights be pretty much changed over because we got people getting the eye, poked in the eye or we changed the point system should it be an automatic round loss if you poke somebody in the eye or should it be an automatic disqualification because if you make the um the punishment so stringent it's like kicking somebody in the balls or like biting somebody or something like that like the rules are so um in top, that so stringent, so tight that if you do it, you like it's in the back of your mind, like oh shit, I'll be disqualified. And so if we able to do that, I think that adds an element, another element to guys' idea or more guys thinking like, okay, I cannot have my fingers played out because a lot of guys are just like, well, okay, whatever. If I'm not going to get in trouble for it, shit, let them warn me. I'd rather deal with the warning than deal with like not having my fingers out and have to think about it. And another situation we got with the rules set too that's fucking very confusing to me is the fence grabbing. Fence grabbing is such a common like foul in MMA, and the referees rarely ever call it. They's like, take your head off the fence, take your head off the fence. But if you're already trying to drag a guy down and you grab the fence, the damage is already done. You saved yourself from going down. You already you already accomplished your mission, which was keep myself from going down and have that guy waste energy. That guy doesn't get his energy back, and you don't lose a point. So there really is no like penalty. So it's like, I look at it like, okay, if you grab the fence, should it be an automatic point deduction or should you automatically be placed where you would be on the ground if that takedown did occur? Because you see this shit all the time, dude. People grab the fence like a motherfucker, man. And a lot of times, I don't know if the referee can see it. Like, maybe they should have like a second officiating crew that's watching the film 
and that identifies these different fouls to help like let the referee know like hey uh in round one around three minute the three minute mark he grabbed the fence so automatically mark a point deduction because you have to start being a lot stringent on the rules and that's one of the things i learned as being a referee when i was refereeing um in basketball soccer football these different sports if you don't call shit right when you see it and actually have a uh uh a, a penalty or some type of repercussion for the said bad action guys are going to keep doing it and the other guys going to do it then other guys doing it. then you got to all hell breaking loose because then you try to go for tick for tick for tack and if you're a referee if you call the second guy for doing the first offense that the first guy did now you got the whole coaches on your staff and then the coaches say do it again and the coaches are yelling at you then you start getting emotional to some degree because once again these people are human beings like you can't take that 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 heat in the moment a lot like not everybody is as good as holding themselves together and maintaining composure when fans, uh, coaches, players are yelling at you. All those other things. So you're likely to throw a tech out. You throw that tech, the coaches get mad, then other coaches are celebrating, and then you got to try to get back them. Then there, it, it, it's, it causes a whole uh, vortex of just fuckery that starts to occur. So I, I just look at the Wyman thing. We got to do something about the gloves. Got to do something. It's, it's been too long that we've been dealing with this nonsense with the fucking gloves. Too many guys have been eye poked. Too many careers have been changed and altered because motherfuckers are kicking, uh, poking people's eyes out. Like Bilal Muhammad, he would have probably, Leon Edwards might not be champion right now if Bilal Muhammad did not get poked in the eye. Think about that. Bilal Muhammad, Bilal Muhammad might be the welterweight world champion right now if he did not get poked in the eye by Leon. And that's crazy to think about how many careers and changes and things that happen to people's life simply because point because we won't change the gloves and, it, and the fighters have already like complained about this have talked about this and it almost seems like a safety violation to some degree because it's like if all the fighters are talking about can we please change gloves and we're still not changing gloves then what are we doing here and side note a side note another thing i've been thinking about too the championship rounds why do we fight five rounds instead of three rounds for championship rounds that's one of the most confusing things because now you have changed the sport. When you change the rule, you change the sports. And what I would propose to do if we we're going to fight championship rounds or have championship fights, I would almost propose this. Why don't we keep it three rounds, but instead of a one minute interval for rest, why don't we give them two minutes of rest? Or better yet, why don't we give them three minutes of rest? Why don't we give them a longer time to have rest, to recharge, recalculate, re-strategize, then go back out again? So now we have more, we have fresher fighters, better strategies, and better fights for championship fights. And at the end of the day, the fight still lasts the same amount of time. You still take up the same amount of air time. Because most of the time, people are on their phones anyway during a little one-minute thing. And it, that one minute goes by pretty quickly. So three minutes or two minutes of rest is not going to change or alter the fight. And you got all the dumb dumb saying, well, your adrenaline's going to drop pumping and all this other shit. Huh? Bro, your adrenaline doesn't stop until the fight is over. When the fight is over, then you're fucking done. These guys get kicked in the balls and they get three, five minute rest and they still go back and they go fight. The guys get eye poked, they take one or two minute rest and they still go back and fight. So the drill is not going to stop. People are going to still be able to fight. But I think the fighters would agree the longer time they have the rest, the more they can strategize, the more fresh they come back out and they get to go back out and do it again at a higher, better clip. And then you get better fights. And we do the math on it. If you give them three minute rest and it's three round fight, Five minutes plus the three, five minutes plus the three. So that's 16 plus the last five, which is 21, which is still shorter than the 25 minutes. of. Uh, well, actually, no, it's 29 minutes that you actually wait for a uh, championship fight. So now we, we bring down the, 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 the time. So now instead of being uh, it's 21 minutes, that 29 minutes that we're waiting and we get better fights because if we keep it a stack, most of those fucking, the fourth and the fifth round are pretty trash. And the guys don't go as hard in the first, second, and third. Because they got to pace themselves because they're fighting 25 minutes instead of 15 minutes. You added 75% of the time on to a fight. That's insane when you really stop and think about it. Like, when you really stop and think about it, for championship fights, you're fighting longer. And you're taking more years off your career. Because it takes more um, preparation, more cardio, more rounds of sparring. Everything gets, all your workload gets increased when you fight the five-round fights instead of fighting three-round fights. So we actually preserve our fighters. You get better quality fights. Where's the loss? 
But once again, I'm I'm too smart for MMA, so most people are gonna say, "Oh, you're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about." Uh, man, we should just keep it what it is because we we took everything from boxing and it's been this way for a long time. Because it's been this way for a long time, that's where we should keep that way. Well, if that's the case, you might as well have kept it with the fucking uh, what you call it? the 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 full round fight like they did in the beginning, where nobody it's just first person to give up. If that's the case that we're gonna do. But once again, Apex out thinking the, uh, the the dumb people, and uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, Wyman he stole a fight that should have been a no contest.